partial power failure. The decision was to land on this deserted island of the Pacific coast in Costa Rica. The tide was high, but that was the only option. Landing on the beach is a lot of fun. I've done it many times. Here in Washington State, we have um, Copales Beach Airport. It's an official state airport. Uh, lots of people come and land here. It's a big beach with low tide is huge. Lots of flyings are made here. Lots of people come. It's very popular. So I've done it many times, many beach landings, but never in an emergency, which happened this time. Every time we do an oil change, I send a sample for oil analysis. Every time I got the result that it was contaminated. I can still fly, but something was contaminating the oil. They thought it was too much of airport flying. The recommendation was to seal the airbox because too much dirt was coming in. Sometimes I will fly between paved strips for 50 hours, then do oil change and it still was contaminated. Uh, oil passages for cylinder number 6 were filled with glove material. No idea how that got there, but that caused partial power failure and emergency landing. As you see in the previous picture, the hole for the oil passages were blocked. Flying along the coastline low with a crazy station. This area is deserted, so I can fly even lower. There's no people, no access. So it's a lot of fun. I always thought that if I have an emergency, there would be no time, but also that it's a very high rate of survival to do emergency landing on the beach. So we were flying low over a deserted island, having lots of fun, and the next leg was over open water or next to ridges. When I started to feel the partial power failure, I had to make a quick decision. Continue over this kind of terrain, rocky shore, jungle, or put it down on the beach with high tide. So this is the approach into the island. Honestly, I thought I was going to make it okay. I saw that it was some soft sand, I said maybe we got stuck, but not like this. The motor was still producing some power, so I came with power on and very slow. I did not want it to touch the brakes because the sand was too soft and I was worried we might get stuck or tip over. When this is happening, you don't believe it's real. It's a very strange feeling. My first thought is this cannot be happening for real. I felt a jolt from the four pulling harness seatbelt, but nothing major. That was all. I am glad that when we touched down, the sand was not as soft, or else we would have tipped over and maybe we would have had injuries. By the time the sand was really soft, we were slow enough that the airplane did not tip over. The first and most important concern was if anybody was injured and everybody was okay, no, nothing happened to anyone, and then we start to check the damage on the airplane. When the nose of the airplane sank, I saw the propeller exploded in front of my eyes in a million pieces of wood. This is an empty propeller, wood core with fiber, and actually it's good because this can help to reduce the damage in the engine because the propeller absorbs the impact and does not translate this to the motor. We'll see when the crank is inspected to see if there is damage, uh, most likely it will be okay. The nose here was sure, but apart from that, 
probably the fire wall was damaged. So that was something we have to worry about later on. Now our main concern was to move the airplane to the dry sand so the tide will not get the airplane and then it will be totally lost. This was a deserted island of the Pacific coast. It's not far from land but there is no access. So the only way we can get help us by air or by boat. So we made calls call on the radio and the emergency services and the first arrive was the police helicopter this helicopter was dispatched from San Jose so between the accident and by the time they arrived it was a little more than an hour the helicopter took my two friends to the closest airport where the paramedics were waiting to evaluate them then they came back for me, but I decided to stay, well, wait for the firemen. They checked me out and I was okay. And now I was relieved because we could try to get the airplane to the dry sand. It took quite a bit of effort, this sand was soft, but we made it okay. I was relieved when I saw the firemen arriving in the little boat. I'm really glad we had enough people to do this because it felt very heavy in the sun and took a while. It felt really strange to start my flight in my plane and finish in a helicopter. At least everybody was in one piece, nobody was hurt. So at the end of the day, it went bad, but it could have been worse. This is my ride back to San Jose. We were through the area, have a look at the airplane, and went back. This accident was in the news, also in the newspaper. The first thing I did when I was out of the airplane, I could get phone signal. I was called my wife telling her that something happened with the airplane, but we were okay, so she doesn't get scared. Newspaper, I never talked to them, but they made up a very fantastic story about this. Now come the recovery of the airplane. The mechanics went that afternoon by boat and then camp overnight to make ready for the next day, removing the wings and move the airplane to shore so they can put them on a boat. One boat with the fuselage and one boat with the wings. This was a challenge because there is an inlet with waves and the boats were very small. Fortunately, it, they managed. It took them all day, but they managed. And they were on the boat late afternoon and arrived to Sierpe at night. How did the cloth material got inside the oil passages, it's a mystery, maybe when they were building the engine or when they were installing the engine, then it had 383 hours and no idea what happened but we should listen to the oil analysis all the time because there was a sign there. It was a challenging and risky operation, there were waves, they told me, the small boat almost tipped over at one point. Um, I was glad to see that the plane arrived intact. They did a really good job, not a single dent or nothing from the transport from the island to the mainland. Now the next challenge was a four hour drive on a small truck to Aranjuez airport where it's in the hangar right now and it's starting to be repaired. Because the insurance prices are so high in Costa Rica, $1,000 per month 
nobody insures the hull we only insure for third party so this is going to cost a lot of money but it's totally worth to repair this airplane and have it in the air again I hope to have it back by August this year mechanics are really good and I think this airplane is going to be even better than it was before because it will have reinforcements and it's going to be taken care of so hope to see it in the air soon please join Patreon if you want to support Backcountry 182 I will be happy to hear from you thank you it is very easy to join to be a Patreon of Backcountry 182 go to the uh, YouTube channel on the right hand side there is the link and then it takes you to the Patreon page here you can see all the tiers and what is all about the support for Backcountry 182 YouTube channel also another way to access the Patreon link is in the description of the video I put in YouTube on Backcountry 182 channel there is a link for Patreon so just click on that and it will take you to the page thank you for watching it would be amazing if you guys are interested and give some support hi i'm dana larry's wife and today we're excited to announce the launching of patreon for our youtube channel bad country 182 which give fans and friends the opportunity to support creators like larry and myself by paying a monthly amount and receiving exclusive content. So with your support through Patreon, we will be able to make more and better content more often and in videos. And Larry can connect with you more personally to hear your questions and concerns and what would you like to see. The really cool thing of being a Patreon is that every dollar amount does help. So go ahead and check out the tiers. You can be a fan and look for our goals to see what we will be able to achieve together at every level of support. Come join us and be part of our adventure.